God wants the good things in life to be yours. And he says in Isaiah 1 and verse 19, that if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Welcome to the Worship Center in Brian's Road, Maryland, where Jesus is saving lives, saving souls, and saving futures. Now here's Dr. Steve Davis with wisdom tips, life treats, and gold nuggets from God's Word. You're going to really like what we're getting into today. I want to talk to you about where God promises us, His people, about eating the good of the land, the abundance of the land, the fat of the land that's here on earth, and what it takes in order to be able to do that. And we want to talk today particularly about the part that obedience plays in receiving from God. We know from the Word of God, from beginning to end, God wants you to have His blessing in your life. I mean, from the very beginning with Adam and Eve, He put them in an awesome place, not a crummy place. You know, God wants the good things in life to be yours. And He says in Isaiah 1 and verse 19, He said, If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. And this is the will of God for you, to eat, to live on, to possess that which is good in life. And when he says he will give you the good of the land for your strength and life, he's talking about here in this life, not in the heaven, in the future. And since that's the will of God for you, what is it between you and the blessing of God on your life and on all that you put your hand to now, here, in this life? God says there are two conditions to your receiving His best in this life. Number one is that you have to be willing. You have to want to. It has to be your choice. Now, we know that God is willing, and then you have to be in will, a willing participant in the blessing of God. Amos 3 verse 3 says, Can two walk together except they be in agreement? So God is willing for you to have the good of the land, but you've got to be willing to eat the good of the land. It has to be a decision, a choice that you make, that you commit to, that you prepare for, and be in a position to receive the good of the land, the best of the place or situation that you're living in. And what is it to be willing? You know, a person says, yeah, sure, yeah, I'm willing. Uh, yeah, 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 give me the best God has to offer in this life. Yeah, of course I want more in this life. I want more money. I want more things. I want better relationships. And hey, if God's given them away, I want some. Being willing is one step. And being willing is not the same as just wanting more or wanting better. That person you might see that's completely broke or the homeless person out on the street might be willing to be a multimillionaire and to live in a huge mansion filled with nice furniture and awesome friends surrounding them, but it won't get that person off the streets. To be willing means for a person to have the desire to make the changes necessary that will bring God's best into your life. Willing is the product of your will or of your choosing. It's not about hoping, it's not about wanting, it's not about wishing, it's about choosing and deciding. Willing has to be your desire, not somebody else's desire. You know, your parents may want you to have a happy, secure life with lots of choices and lots of opportunities available to you. You know, and your relatives might want the same thing for you. If you're in a church, your pastor may want the best for you, but you know what? You've got to want it. And for some people, there's the mistaken idea that if they simply stop doing certain things, they will be in a position for God's blessing. For example, maybe a person with a drug or alcohol or pill problem who also steals and cheats other people, you know, and they may end up in a prison cell where none of these things are possible. And that person's situation has changed so that these wrongdoings are not as easy or not as possible but that's not the same as being willing and obedient. You know, it's not the choice for them. It's that circumstance. So to summarize, to be willing means to use your will, to make your choice, to act differently, to do differently, to think differently, to speak differently. And God said, if you will choose the right thing and then obey or act on what he says, you will be blessed in what you do. God says in James 1 verse 25, the doer of the work shall be blessed in his deeds. It's not the person who hears and maybe agrees, 
but then doesn't change who will be blessed in life. It's the person who believes and then acts on or obeys what God says who will be blessed by God. And you make the decision that you're willing. You say, you know what? I'm going to be willing. And then you obey. Then God brings his goodness into your life. He releases his blessings from heaven into your life here on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. And it's more than sowing a seed. You know, some people like to talk about all their giving and all their sacrifices and what they're sowing for, and then wonder why they're not receiving the abundant blessings of God. You know, and many people talk about how they've sown for the blessing of God in their finances and in their lives, and that for some reason their harvest is being held back. Here's a reason why a person can sow abundantly and still not receive the harvest that they're desiring. 1 Samuel 15, verse 22 and 23. Samuel, the man of God, said to Saul, King Saul, has the Lord as great a delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, listen to this, to obey is better than sacrifice and to listen better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is the same as iniquity and idolatry. Then he said, because you have rejected the word of the Lord, Samuel said this to Saul, he has also rejected you from being king. So there is sowing, yes, but there's obedience plus sowing. And Samuel, the man of God, asked King Saul if God was pleased with giving to God or the offerings or sowing if that person is living in disobedience. You know, it does no good to give heavily to the kingdom of God if a person isn't doing what God says. And in this passage, King Saul had disobeyed what God had plainly said, but he felt like he'd made this big offering to God and that ought to make up for his disobedience. You know, if a person sows abundantly, but then doesn't obey what God says, God's not gonna send the increase. Man sows, listen, and man waters, but only God gives the increase. That's 1 Corinthians 3, verse 6. Paul said, I've planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is the person that plants anything, nor the person who waters, but it's God who gives the increase. And that means that if God doesn't give the increase, there'll be no increase. King Saul, he's a pretty interesting case. King Saul was chosen by God. He was anointed by God. At times he was moved on by the Spirit of God, Saul knew the Word of God, you know what? But he didn't do what the Word of God said to do. And when a person doesn't obey what God says, that's counted by God as rejecting the Word of the Lord. So you have to be willing. We have to make right choices. We have to find out what God says is the right thing to do, and then we have to do it, and do it consistently. You know, and sometimes I'll run into somebody who says, well, hey, I don't pretend I'm something I'm not. Some people think that as long as they admit that they're not doing right, you know, hey, I'm not a hypocrite. I don't claim to be all that. And they think that, well, as long as I admit that I'm not all that, then that's the same as obeying God. You know, they'll say, you know, at least I admit it. I know I'm not right, but hey, at least I admit it. They confess their sins, but they don't turn from them. In fact, they hold on to their sins and cling to them and figure that as long as they admit that they do this, God's okay with it. If we're going to have God's blessing in our lives, we need to do what God says to do in his word and not just be hearers only, deceiving ourselves like God says in James 1 and verse 22. If you and I know the word of God, but we don't do what he says, God says that we're missing the mark or sinning. He says in James 4, verse 17, Therefore, to the person that knows to do good and doesn't do it to that person, they've missed the mark. It's sin. Disobedience opens the door to the enemy in a person's life. You know, it's like a person refusing to wear their seatbelt and feeling safe because they admit they don't wear it. Hey, I'm all right, man. I don't say I wear one. You know, I'm okay. And then they're completely surprised when they're in an accident and their face goes through the windshield. I mean, that's a horrible thing to have happen. But, you know, people do this. Like, hey, I'm not a hypocrite. I don't say I wear seat belts. And then completely surprised when they, they have an injury due to not wearing their seat belt. To have the blessing of God in our lives, to be true Christians, is to believe the Word of God and to act on the Word of God. This is what's meant by obeying God. God wants to give you 
the good of the land. And in order for that to happen, we have to agree with his choices and then be willing and actually do what he says. Faith without works is dead. What we say and what we do reveals our level of walking with God. Our faith will rise no higher than the level of our obedience. Obedience is the manifestation or the mark of faith. God says in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 8 that Jesus was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Even Jesus, the Son of God on earth, was obedient. His life was marked more than anything else by obedience. All the signs, all the wonders, all the miracles, all the healings were a result of Jesus being obedient. Jesus said in John 8, verse 29, said, He that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. If we want God's blessing on our life, if we want the presence of God in our home or at school or at work, in the community, then we need to obey God and watch God begin to move in our entire life. I mean, from the beginning to the end of the Bible, God is ready and willing to bless his people. And if we want the blessing of God, all we have to do is believe, be willing, be obedient. Blessings follow obedience. Obedience paves the way for the blessings of God. Disobedience causes blessings to be withheld and held up. Disobedience opens the door for problems and setbacks. In the verse that we started with there in 1 Samuel 15, we learn that God will not honor a person who is not obedient to him. And God cared enough that he sent his prophet Samuel to Saul when Saul disobeyed God. Samuel told King Saul that God was withholding blessing due to King Saul's disobedience. That's a word for somebody. What did King Saul do? He argued with God's message. King Saul argued with God's message and with God's messenger. King Saul justified himself and declared how he truly was obedient and that Samuel didn't understand. You know, to be fair, Saul had obeyed some of what God had said to do, but not all of what God told him to do. And all that he could have done if he had been willing and obedient. And King Saul begins to argue. He says, but I have performed the commandment of the Lord. I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. And in all fairness, he had done some of the things God specifically instructed him to do. But he also did some things that God instructed him not to do. And there were some things that he did not do that God said, you better do this. King Saul sounds like he would fit into almost any group of modern Christians. He did some of what God wanted him to do, but not all of it. His obedience was only partial. King Saul partially obeyed. And then he told about all the sacrifices he was making to God, all of his giving, all of his sowing, if you want to put it like that. In reality, he was accusing God of expecting too much. He was willing to criticize God's expectations rather than admit that he had not done what God told him to do. We have a whole generation like that from my generation on. You know, many people are like that. They believe in God and they believe that Jesus is Lord and they want to go to heaven. Sometimes they read their Bible, you know, if it pops up in one of their apps. And they're decent citizens, you know, good neighbors, but there are other things that God has been dealing with them about. And not only has God been dealing with them, it's not just been God, but God has sometimes sent some of their family members and friends to bring warning or to bring wisdom and counsel to them. But still, a lot of people won't admit that they're doing wrong and they won't turn away from what's wrong. And they say the same kinds of things that King Saul said. They go, but I have obeyed God. I'm not that bad of a person. And they, you know, tell about some good deeds they've done, you know, and God says, yeah, but you've rejected the word of the Lord. I've said this and you're doing that. I've said, don't do this, but you're doing it anyway. Jesus said, he came to earth to obey the father. When he came to the earth, it was so we could be saved. It was because he was obeying the father. He said in John 6, verse 38, for I came down from heaven Not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said in Matthew 7, verse 21, Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. There's more to being a Christian 
in saying that Jesus is the Lord. I mean, a, a person can believe the right things and still be lost. I mean, Satan believes that Jesus is Lord. Jesus said that the revelation of a person's salvation is obedience, doing the will of God. It's about loving Jesus, obeying him. You know, and some people might say, you know, well, as long as I love the Lord, though, that's enough, isn't it? I mean, hey, love's the most important thing. Love is the most important thing. That's right. And Jesus said in John 14, verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray to the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. You're speaking about the Holy Spirit. Jesus said that what reveals our love for him is our obedience. Obedience is the key for the fullness of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Down in verse 21, Jesus says, The person that has my commandments and keeps them, that's the one that loves me. And that person shall, that loves me shall be loved by my Father. And I will love that person and will manifest or reveal myself to them. Obedience releases the revelation or the manifestation of Jesus into our lives. Down here in verse 23, Jesus answered and says, If a person loves me, they'll keep my words, and my Father will love that person, and we will come to them and will make our abode, or we will live there, and it'll be our presence will be in that person. Obedience assures the presence of God with us in our everyday life. So Jesus is saying, if we want to experience God's presence and moving in our lives, do what he says. Be obedient. If we want the moving of God in our lives, Jesus says, be obedient to God. You know, and maybe if God isn't responding to your praying or not moving in your life, at least what I do when I feel like that, always examine, is there some area in my life I'm not obeying God in? Is there some area that I'm not letting the Lord have his way in? It's important for us to consider our ways and to ask him, you know, Holy Spirit, is there any disobedience in my life? Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. But I'll tell you this, if there is, he'll speak to your heart and he'll reveal it to you. You know, love for the Lord Jesus is the most important thing. It's love for the Lord that causes us to keep his word. Jesus said in John 15 and verse 10, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. And he goes on to say, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love, obedience is totally in relation to the Holy Spirit. Here's what the Holy Spirit had Peter say in Acts 5 verse 32. He says that God gives the Holy Spirit to those who obey him. He said this, we are witnesses of these things and so is also the Holy Ghost whom God has given to them that obey him, those that act on their faith, those that believe the word and act on it. If I want to be full of the Holy Spirit, I need to walk with the Father in obedience. And you can do that and I can do it, not because of our power, but because of his power. Not in our power and might, but by his power and might. God says in 3 John 1 and verse 4, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. God says that obeying him is the key to power in prayer and having him answer us when we pray. I'm giving you a lot of word today because there's always somebody says, oh, he's teaching works. No, I'm not. I'm teaching the word. 1 John 3, 22 says, we have whatsoever we ask him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. If we won't do what he says, it seems like he won't do what we ask. And I thank God that he's the strength of our life and that through him and only through him and only by his grace, we can walk with God in a way that pleases him. I want to pray, God, we obey you because we love you. We love you, God, because you first loved us. Jesus, you are my savior. You are my hope. You are my enabler. You are my strength. And Lord, today, I confess I'm willing. Make that your confession. Lord, I'm willing. Say that, Lord, I'm willing. And Lord, I'm obedient. From this moment on, I'm obedient. And therefore, I shall Eat the good of the land, the fat of the land. I shall possess, partake of, live on the good of the land, the abundance of the land. Because Jesus purchased that for me on the cross. And the best thing in the land is salvation. Jesus, you are my Lord and you are my Savior. Forgive me for all my sins and failings and bless me with your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen.
We hope you were blessed, inspired, and challenged by what you heard today. And we pray that God spoke some inspired truths into your heart. This ministry is supported by your gifts and donations. If you'd like to help us spread the good news, you can give at our website, www.theworshipcenter.org, or you can text to give at 301-637-0777. It's easy and takes only seconds to set up. Thank you for listening and God bless you and your family.